Hi, it's Lorna, and today I'm going to be talking to you about shrink art. And shrink art has been around since the 70s, and um, a lot of people know it as shrinky dinks. But basically, what it is, is you take plastic, I have some plastic sheets here, sorry I have a white table, it's hard to see, um, but it needs to have this symbol, it needs to be a number six, or it needs to be purchased for the intent of being shrink plastic. The shrink plastic that I have here is sanded, and I know that Shrinky Dink sells a brand that's called Rough and Ready, and the sanded is just really good if you're going to be using colored pencils. Um, today for this tutorial I'm using permanent markers, but if you wanted to use colored pencils, I highly recommended getting the sanded type. There's many different brands, or you can sand your own at home. So at home, Shrink art is a really great way to recycle and reuse plastic that would otherwise go to the landfill. So it's a really great art project to help our environment as well. So you can use any plastic, um, say like something that muffins come in or cake containers or um, mostly, mostly those things, maybe some croissants or something like that. Mostly bread products, bakery products tend to come in this kind of plastic. Um, but it, and sometimes like takeout containers will have those and it's just a piece of plastic on top that's clear. You wanna use the clearest part possible and draw on that. But it will have this symbol on it. I don't have any right now because I don't really get a whole lot of that kind of food. Um, Sometimes the ones are a little bit thinner, so if you wanted to, you could purchase the plastic. But it does need to have this symbol. It's like a little triangle with lines for the recycle, and then has the number six. Okay, not number five, but the number six. So, I have the plastic here, but I'm gonna talk about some other things like finishing and the markers. So I have here some Sharpie markers. I have two different kinds. This is extreme fade resistant. I don't know how true that is, but it's pretty cool. But this one's a little bit thicker. I like this one for blocking in large areas. And then this one is a little bit thinner and this is great for different kinds of lines. So shaping your lines is really important if you're doing just black and white. Now, if you're not doing black and white and you're doing color, they have permanent markers, but you can also do color pencils. Well, they have permanent markers in so many fun colors. So many fun colors. I have reds and browns and greens and um, I mean, just wowza. And this one just wasn't that in, that expensive and you get all these beautiful colors, all these my gray scale. Um, but when you're using color, you wanna make sure that you use lighter colors than you would expect because if you use too dark of a color, when it bakes, it's going to condense. And when you're condensing color, it gets higher in pigment. So, um, for example, if I do black, I'm gonna show you on the one that you're gonna see in a little bit. Um, if I just do streaky black hair here, you're not gonna see all of these gaps because in the oven, it's gonna come close together. All these little gaps are gonna disappear. So if you do that with color, what happens is it concentrates the color in one particular area and it can make it really, really dark. So if you do something like, um, like a light green or something and when it bakes, it'll become a much darker green. So keep that in mind when you're using that. Color pencils tend to stay truer to their color in the oven um, and that's just because um, they are 100% opaque to begin with. Okay, so I have some different ways of finishing my Shrinky Dinks. So you can use nail polish. So this is one of my husband, it's one of my favorite that I've ever done because it's just so funny. And I've used this unicorn sparkle on there. So a pro tip when you're using any kind of, um, this I think has ethanol in it. Yeah. 
This is ethyl acetate, so, and it has some different kinds of alcohol in there and uh, all sorts of chemicals. Well, those will basically remove or smear or reactivate your Sharpie. So what you wanna do is instead of painting it on like normal, what you wanna do is you wanna just kind of blob it on, pour it on even, and let it um, dome up on the sides. And that will give you one, a nice smooth surface, but two, it's not gonna drag your Sharpie marker. Okay, so if you're gonna use any kind of nail polish, clear or otherwise, you definitely want to be careful not to smear your hard work. Okay, so I also have this, which you may have seen at the beginning of the video, which is, um, it's Mod Podge Mo uh, Dimensional Magic. And this stuff is amazing. It dries really hard. It looks kind of like creamy and kind of opaque in the bottles. And it looks almost yellow in the bottle. But um, I assure you, it dries crystal clear, like so clear. And it gives you a nice sheen and you can see that it, it's just domed up just slightly on there. So it has a little bit of a thickness. I'd say maybe a millimeter of thickness. And you can use this on top of a lot of projects, paintings, anything. Um, and it acts a lot like resin. As far as resin coating things, it gives you a really nice shiny gloss and a nice thick hard shell. So um, it's not quite as hard as resin, but um, for this project, I think it's great. You could put resin on top of these as well. It's just um, resin tends to activate some of the alcohol in there. So um, I have a magnet on the back of this and you could totally make refrigerator magnets, which is great. You can make keychains, or if I wanted, I could punch the hole here and I could make a pendant by just adding my jump ring there, and putting a chain through it or beads or whatever I want. Um, so you can make jewelry, you can make just art. And I've also seen people using this and sculpting it in ways to make three dimensional projects, which is really fun. Um, and carving it with X-Acto blades so that you get the difference between where you've carved and haven't carved it because they're scoring it. So when it folds in the oven, it does really cool things. So as you can see here, this is kind of translucent and see-through. And you can see as it condenses, it gets a little bit more milky and opaque. And that's totally normal. That's what this is supposed to do. They do sell plastic that uh, will remain crystal clear. I don't particularly like the crystal clear look, but this is pretty, pretty opaque as it is. Okay, so I'm going to add a time lapse of me making my face. So I'm gonna make my face and then I'm gonna come back and finish it off. So you'll see me baking it and everything. get any footage of it shrinking in the oven so that'll be kind of a surprise for you but um, don't be alarmed if it curls up it will flatten out in the oven it may have some warping but probably not um, if it curls up and won't uncurl you can just take a toothpick or something while it's still warm and flatten that out um, I wasn't able to get the footage without melting my camera so um, but it's 325 Um, and then you're going to bake it for uh, about three minutes to five minutes. Really, you just want to put it in the oven. You'll watch it shrink. You'll watch it curl and do weird things and it'll warp and be really like for the first time kind of alarming. Um, and then it will flatten back out. And once it's flattened back out and you don't see any more shrinking happening, it's done. So you can just take it out. Um, if it curls up and has it flattened back out, give it a few more minutes or maybe another minute. Just turn on your oven light and give it a, give it a go and look at it. Um, if you don't have an oven light, you know, take a peek, 
open up your oven. Taking a peek won't ruin it or anything like that. And if I took this out curled or half shrunken, I could put it right back in the oven and it would be fine. Okay, so as you can see, I have my hair. And you see how it got so much more pigmented and darker. You can see some of my lines. This thing was huge before. I'll show you in comparison to my reference. So here's the reference that I traced. And then here's my mini little face. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty cool how much it really shrinks. I'd say that shrunk probably at a little over 50%. Um, so really cool that you can do that. Okay, so I wanna finish this. So I wanna put, I don't know if I wanna do glitter or the dimensional magic. So I'm gonna do the dimensional magic and then I will probably put some glitter on later. So this Mod Podge, you really just wanna make sure you're on a flat surface. You're gonna put it on there and you're gonna leave it until it dries. So um, if you need to move it for some reason after you've done it, you should put this on like a board or cookie sheet or a piece of paper so that you can move it. Um, I recommend something hard that you can move. Um, I have this little clipboard that I'm gonna use. I have my clipboard that way I can just pick this up move it out of my way you don't want to tilt it at all after you put the magic on there because it will spill it over you don't want that to happen okay so all right and I don't want bubbles in here but I do kind of want to Tilt it, and this is actually what Mod Podge recommends you do, is not shake it. You never wanna shake this, because you don't want a ton of bubbles. So I'm just agitating it a little bit. Okay, so it has this little tip, which is great for doing all these little fine lines. And I'm just gonna start in the center and squeeze. And then I'm gonna use the tip to kind of spread it out. And if you see any bubbles, you can take a needle or a toothpick. So I'm not adding any more currently. I'm just kind of zhuzhing it towards the center. And you can see it's very yellow. Um, it has kind of like a varnish tinge to it. And it almost looks iridescent and blue in some areas. So it's kind of a, a strange substance for sure. You just wanna bring it all the way to the edge of your piece. And I have a, a bubble right where my nose is, so I'm gonna move that. You can move the bubbles kind of to the edge and it makes it a little bit easier to pop them too. But you can see I'm putting quite a bit on and I've done this for so many projects and I still have a lot left, so it goes a lot further than you would think. Um, I picked this up at a craft store, probably Michael's because um, they have a lot, a big line of Mod Podge items. Big fan of Mod Podge and all of their things. They have, you know, outdoor products. They have indoor products. They have things for collage and decoupage and all the podges. <laughs> so um, I just recently discovered this one. I came across a YouTube tutorial of them using it and they have some really fun glittery ones as well. So I'm gonna show you how to pop that bubble right on my cheek. So I'm actually, because I have in front of me a mechanical pencil, that's what I'm gonna use. But you could use a needle or a toothpick. So I'm just going to pop that bubble, if it will pop. Wow, that thing is stubborn. I can't get the center of it. to the edge and see if I will just get to the edge and pop. Wow, that is the most stubborn bubble I have ever, ever seen. <laughs> okay, so I have all of my model magic on there. 
Oh my goodness, I can't even pop it with my finger. I'm just gonna get it off. It's, normally they pop. That one was a mutant bubble. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, so now have a little bit of spillage from, from the bubble fiasco. I'm just gonna move my little face away so that it doesn't um, adhere to the paper below it. Okay, perfect. So I have my face, it's all covered, and this is gonna sit here and dry. I think they recommend um, three hours, so I'm going to let that dry probably overnight. But um, it adds a little bit of a highlight to things too, which I find really, really fun. Um, you can kind of see on this one. I think that has to do with the slight blue hue. So you can see it's already starting to go from this really kind of gross yellow to a little bit clearer right now so don't be alarmed when it doesn't look fully transparent right now it will get better and i made sure not to go over my hole but if i do i can just take something sharp like a needle and drill it back out so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you try some shrink art at home and that you kind of relive i remember doing this as a kid in the 90s so i hope that you relive some nostalgia because like I said it's been around since the 70s so I know a lot of people have have made these if you maybe forgot about them hopefully you get to relive a little bit of that